Dirty and Beautiful celebrates the many working relationships and friendships that I have in the music business. And uh, my life as a touring musician and, uh, and generally just my life. Uh, I can't think of a better way to celebrate these many relationships than in music. And uh, we try to just bring as many of my favorite people as possible together, just have a great time and play together. There really wasn't too much of a compositional kind of uh, reach for it, other than the fact that I wanted the pieces to be great features for the musicians and uh, for them to be affecting. And uh, One of the great things about this record is, is actually being the catalyst. Uh, in fact, who better place to bring someone like, uh, potentially anyway, John McLaughlin and Alan together. Uh, and also, in the first recording sessions that took place in 2009, uh, in October, in, in Los Angeles, we had the great Jerry Goodman. Who worked, we worked together before in, a, in, a, in an old band of mine called Force Majeure, and it was really fantastic to have him accept the invitation. And uh, that was the first time for him to play with alongside Alan and uh, Jimmy Johnson, my all-time favorite bass player. And um, together we came out from those first sessions. In fact, it was one day we came out with three takes of Boulevard Bologna, which, which kind of paints a picture of a, a very kind of surreal feeling of being on tour, which we were just previously to the sessions in Canada. And uh, we had three takes of that, so this, people get the real idea of what it's like to be on the road. Uh, and then we did a, a cover of a great Jan Hammer piece called Between the Sheets of Music, on which we had uh, Jerry come in and play amazingly on that. Um, we also got a take of Fred, which is coming up on volume two of this project, um, and you'll hear that, uh, along with uh, like a stock favorite of a tune we performed with Alan called Leave Them On. And uh, all of these stem from those original recording sessions. Then I had an idea to bring uh, quite a new friend of mine, um, Steve Hackett, who, with whom I'd been doing a, an acoustic project some months before. And uh, I really wanted to get involved playing electric guitar and I had, a, I had a ballad lying around that, that, that I thought was just a great vehicle for that, so we, we did that in London. Um, I also wanted to put together uh, a band with uh, something featuring Robin Trow, who I've been working with, who I had been working with a couple of years prior to making the record, along with Jack Bruce. Um, and it was really nice to play with him, on, uh, particularly on a, on, a, on a Miles Davis piece, which John McLaughlin, first appeared on, so uh, lo lots of twists and turns and, and ties, you know, and threads in the album, which is uh, one, of the, one of the really interesting and unique things about this record. I had a burning desire to get John McLaughlin involved in, in some of these pieces, and, uh, you know, from the moment he said yes, I knew just the piece, and I, I had this really up-tempo piece called Dreams in Blue, uh, which is an old composition, but brought up to date. Uh, I also have a, a composition we play in, in John's band, The Fourth Dimension, which is uh, called Sully. Uh, um, and I had different in, people in mind to play on that, so we, we got some European sessions together, and uh, the great Jimmy Johnson once again played on Dreams in Blue, one of the f most fantastic bass solos ever appeared on that track, uh, I have to say. And, um, and on Sully, we have a really unlikely pairing in Mark King, uh, who I'd worked with previously a lot, and um, and John. Uh, and in this take, this, there's a real feeling of improvisation between them, and, and, and the, the way that they're playing head-to-head -head is just absolutely just, it really hit the nail on the head as far as how this piece should be played. Fantastic. A major part of my involvement as a musician, particularly a drummer, was down to uh, a playing relationship I had with a guy called Steve Topping who appears on this record uh, with his own composition called The Maverick. And uh, we used to play together a lot through the 80s, uh, you know, in the background. We, we, we had one little studio live record, and then I went ahead and played on two of his records. 
uh, time and distance and uh, late flower. Um, but this is, Maverick is a piece that he wrote some years back and I was determined to do something with it. In fact, I used to play it at drum clinics. Um, so I decided to ask him to arrange it and, uh, and to include it on the record. I'm, I'm very For those that know me as a, as a keyboard player, uh, I should say that I was very immensely influenced by the great Jan Hammer, keyboard player and composer. And uh, a particular kind of situation arose really uh, surrounding two of the tracks on this project. Uh, the first one, which is the first track of volume one, um, I had an empty solo spot. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you why. Uh, but I need to get something something on there, something impressive. And uh, I started to think about you know, what I could do. And th this is a guy that, that really, you know, I, I don't have words to say how much I love what he does. And, uh, and I decided to get in contact with Jan Hammer. And I phoned his manager and ran the track by him, and he was really, really pleased to do it. Uh, this was right the last minute before the album came out, I should say, and uh, he came forward with this fantastic solo. I mean, just knocked me on my feet, and uh, and that kind of paved the way for for a kind of a reunion of of, of that situation um, on volume two, and. It's an old Tony Williams tune called Fred from the album Believe It. Um, and he's played a solo on there too, so uh, I'm really excited about it. One of the tracks I had prepared from the from the first record was was a track called England Green. It's kind of the third cover of it <laughs> that I've been involved in uh, so far. Uh, the original being on an album called Diary of a Plastic Box. And uh, for some reason this tune become a firm favorite with people. It's, uh, it's quite a tuneful thing, and it, and, it, and it calls for kind of a longing, um, soulful guitar kind of uh, melody playing. And all I could think about was Jimmy Herring, because you know, he has this uh, direct line straight to your heart, you know, and if you're standing in the wrong place, it'll break, because uh, he's that powerful, he's that visceral. and. Uh, you know, whatever he plays, you know, in terms of phrases, of, of melody, you know, it's, it's just the most, uh, it just gives you the most that you can imagine out of out of a phrase and, and makes it just absolutely sing and speak to your heart. And, you know, you, you need musicians like this in the world today. And we have the great Jimmy, who I'm proud to say plays guitar on this tune. I'd like to mention a bass player called Lawrence Cottle, who is a, a really old friend of mine from... Britain, and um, he appears on a few cuts on the on the first volume and the second volume. And it's really a great pleasure to have him there. It, a, a lot of the decisions for personnel just came to me by instinct, and uh, and Lawrence was a, a really successful one. Um, he's got such a gigantic sound and a great feeling and a great sense of feel for uh, groovy things and. Uh, even sparse things, he just knows where to put all those really good notes, and uh, I'm very happy. I'm overjoyed to be featuring Alex Makacek, the great young guitar player, on the record, <clears throat> and he, uh, it was a special surprise to me to learn that he'd written a piece especially for it, in case I needed it, uh, you know, which was a really great thing, because I didn't have anything directly that was that was suitable to feature him, and, th and this record really is open to uh, other people's compositions, you know, as you will know by the Steve Topping thing and, and other things. Um, and uh, Alex is uh, relatively a new friend, uh, although I'm told we met a few years ago in, in a bar that neither of us remember it, <laughs> which is the basis for any great friendship, let's face it. And um, uh, I'm just really happy about the, the composition he brought along, which is really full of... Uh, a lot of very interesting writing as, as Alex is putting forward this, these days under his own name and uh, I'm really delighted to have a part of it on the record. I'd worked with uh, Wayne Krantz, uh, a little bit with Peter Erschkamp 
And uh, I'd also jammed with him in the 55 bar a few years back too. <laughs> Not that I remember much about that. Uh, but um, I was determined to get, if I could get something of Wayne on this record, you know, I would be in seventh heaven. And, uh, and we managed to pull that off. And uh, the track that I, that I had in mind was, uh, you know, there are various tracks from time to time on the, on, throughout the volume two and, and volume one where they're just jams and they're born out of jams. So they're, they're really, really, uh, they were born out of something really impulsive and really spontaneous. Um, and uh, this is one of those tracks and it's by intention a sort of rhythmic groovy track because I really wanted to get some of Wayne's uh, most superior uh, rhythm playing uh, and he, he's, he's full of rhythm all the time inside what he does which is he's just such a modernist he's so progressive you know, he's really like no one else uh, he's a real character with, with, with how he plays and I just love characters and music, and to play with this guy and just to have him play on a short piece. I'm very happy. Ray Russell, he's another good friend from the UK. Uh, I first played with him in uh, 1994, 93, 94, when uh, around the time he and Mo Foster, the bassist, had a, had a band with Simon Phillips called RMS. Uh, and I used to do depths for Simon, basically. One memorable one included uh, Gil Evans one time, that, that was really exciting. Um, uh, anyway, I wanted to get Ray along just to just to play again together. And um, it's on a it's on a piece. He's a real animal activist for animal rights and stuff, and, and I feel quite strongly about that too. So we, we have a track called "If the Animals Have Guns Too," which is short for "It's Only a Sport If the Animals Have Guns Too." So it's just great to have Ray on there because he knows where I'm coming from with the track and uh, he's a great guitar player. One of the things that mirrors volume 2 to volume 1 is that both albums feature a Jan Hammer cover. And this particular one comes from um, some of the incidental music that he wrote for Miami Vice, uh, which I really enjoyed. And there was something about what he did uh, in that setting that was... Uh, Amazingly evocative and always consistent in that way, and uh, really spoke to me. And there was a there was a piece called Rain, uh, which was set against like neon at night, and uh, you know the roads were completely wet, and uh, it's just got that kind of feeling about it. And uh, for the tune, I really wanted to get the, a guitarist I really like uh, called Neil Taylor. His name might not mean too much, but he's presently playing guitar with Robbie Williams. I, uh, I saw the people I hang out with, <laughs> and uh, and also he he was responsible for the fantastic guitar solo in um, "Everybody Wants to Rule the World" by Tears for Fears. He also played on songs from the Big Chair, their album. Uh, one of the most amazing guitar players that the world knows not much about. So it meant a lot to me to, to get him along and play on that ballad. Mr. Mike Stern, the great guitarist. Uh, I've been on the road with him a couple of times and really enjoyed playing with him each time. It's an absolute knockout. Um, and I really wanted him to play on the album, but I wanted him to, wanted to bring him out of his area just a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I'd like to try and stretch these artists you know, and give them, present them with something that's, that's not immediately comfortable, you know, just to see what happens, you know. Um, it's a really amazing experience to, uh, you know, as I say, I play with all of these musicians, but in very different circles, and usually their circles. So to bring all these guys together in some kind of different formats was, is of great interest and fascination to me, because new things are going to happen, but familiar things, but they're going to happen in new ways. And... Um, that's the way this album is just full of surprises and uh, it's one of the most exciting elements about the 